and welcome back. Over the past six months, we New Zealanders have been invited to have our say on formalizing the country's current constitutional arrangements. And although public submissions on the Constitution conversation have closed, the discussion continues. The Constitutional Advisory Panel will now consider the public opinions raised in that conversation and report back to the government on its findings, and that should happen by the end of the year. There's already been some debate about how relevant an official constitution is and what benefit it will actually bring to New Zealand. And here on this program, we spoke to a U.S. constitutional law expert about that issue earlier in the year. In the United States, um, I think what it brings is a, um, uh, a measure of stability in terms of uh, the governmental structure, um, and um, it brings uh, some protection to individual rights. Um, but mostly what it brings, I think, um, and this is over time, is a respect for the rule of law and a culture that, that um, values the rule of law. And a comparison between the United States and New Zealand is instructive because what it indicates is that you don't necessarily need a constitution in order to um, inculcate respect for the rule of law. If you looked at the United States and New Zealand in terms of government stability, in terms of respect for the rule of law, in terms of respect for individual rights, you'd see many more similarities than differences. The call for a New Zealand constitutional review stemmed from the Maori Party's confidence and supply agreement with the national-led government during the 2008 to 2011 electoral term. And the review itself covers a range of issues pertinent to this country's unique national identity. What would the role be of the Treaty of Waitangi in constitutional law? and also a discussion about electoral matters, including the possibility of increasing the time that government stays in power. And that's the issue we're about to take a closer look at on this program. Our current electoral term is three years and has been for most of the last 160 years. Auckland-based think tank Maxim Institute says the time is right to increase that to four years. And on that basis, researcher Kieran Madden submitted his recommendations for change to the Constitutional Advisory Panel. I asked him about what benefits a four-year term would bring to New Zealand. Sure. Basically, uh, one of the big problems New Zealand faces, and uh, um, Sir Geoffrey Palmer said that the, the, the current three-year term was the, the greatest enemy of policy and lawmaking that New Zealand has at the moment. Uh, we're the only Western democratic country that has a three-year term um, without an upper house. So, um, and over sort of, from a group of over 100 democracies with uh, no upper house, um, there are four, um, four democracies that have a three-year term. So it's, you know, four out of 100 is not, mm. is a bit strange. But that's, you know, there are other factors which are unique to New Zealand, uh, which need to be considered mm -hmm. as well. So basically we just, it'll, it'll give um, more time for policies, um, basically what the government sees as a vision for New Zealand, what it would see as a good thing for New Zealanders, gives them more time to develop that, mm -hmm. um, but also gives them more time to pass uh, good laws, mm -hmm. more time for consultation, more time for consideration, more time for discussion between sort of coalition partners and parties. Um, at the moment, it is simply rushed, mm -hmm. and we're seeing that there's a lot of poor quality laws um, being made, and there's quite a few examples of those. Um, and over the past, you know, then how? one and a half centuries. We've had other times when we've had four-year parliamentary term, but they seem to generally be in times of emergency. Correct, yes. So most of the times, I think three times, it's been the, the, um, the three-year term that we currently have has sort of been dislodged, yes. mostly in times of war. Mm -hmm. So when an election would be not the best time, <laughs> um, when the time of, you know, we're in emergency, it's not a good time to go to the polls, um, and you need to give time for governments to lead and make big decisions during war, so they've sure. come up. But Usually straight after the war, they've come back again to, okay. to three years. Um, and one government tried to extend it by four years, and they did. Yes. But that was extremely unpopular. And um, then they got voted out. They did indeed, <laughs> yes. So, so what are the um, tools in place for in times of emergency that already exist for a New Zealand government to then extend the parliamentary term? To extend it currently? Yes. Um, I don't think there are any. Basically, it's up to the government can, at the moment, extend the term. Right. Um, they need a, a super majority, which is basically 75% of the chamber. So 
for the moment, if National and Labor agreed mm -hmm. that the parliamentary term should be extended, then they could simply do it. That's fine. Um, but obviously they'd have to face the, the public at some point mm -hmm. from that. Um, so it's, as I said before, you know, the last government that tried to do that yep. was voted out. So. so over that period of time, you know, we've had referenda about extending Correct. a parliamentary term, but yes. it's always been rejected. Correct. So why is that? We've had two referenda on this, um, on this subject, on whether the term should be extended or not. Um, politicians seem to like more time in power, which makes sense, of course they do. Um, we're arguing that it's a good thing as well. Um, so once was in 1967, okay. it was rejected quite soundly, I think, by over 60%, and the last one was in 1990 Correct. as well. Um, so I think it's just a sense that people, and, and reasonably so, see elections as the primary way to keep governments accountable um, if, if they're not um, representing them well. They want to turf them out. Um, so more of that seems better. So why is now the right time then to relook at that and mm -hmm. look at changing it? Yeah, so we sort of, had I been writing this paper in, say, 10 years ago, yeah. 20 years ago, I would have said, no, four-year four -year term is okay. not a good idea. Um, back in 1986, when the Royal Commission wrote their report, which recommended MMP as our electoral system, um, they also recommended that we go to a four-year term as well. Hmm. At the same time? Uh, they recommended we go to a four-year term. However, there was a, um, a caveat on that saying that um, if New Zealand adopted a proportional system like MMP, mm -hmm. then a four-year term would be a good idea for New Zealand. Right. Um, back then we had first past the post, which is um, you know, primarily two parties, mm -hmm. one party in government, one party in opposition, and no other parties essentially. Mm -hmm. um, but since we've had MMP, um, we've had it since 1996 now. You see lots of coalition arrangements, um, policies and issues and laws need to be debated. Um, and every, every law that goes through has to be, um, there needs to be some sort of consensus. There needs to be a majority built yeah. consensus sought through, um, say, National and the Maori Party, for example. Mm -hmm. They need to actually agree that this is a policy they want to go with. Um, and the Maori Party can say, no, we, sure. we don't want that policy. So with this power sharing arrangements, such yes. a gov coalition government would need longer to come to a conclusion and implement policy. Yeah. It, and spoil it. It takes there. time. Okay. So, um, there's more discussion, there's more consultation, um, mm -hmm. more parties, more people are being um, consulted. Mm -hmm. um, and that simply does, that process takes time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you just make a decision by yourself, um, you can make it pretty quickly. Yeah. But often, had you consulted with a few other people, it might have taken longer that you make it to a better outcome in the end. Right. But, I mean, such a change sounds like it could be quite an upheaval. Mm -hmm. What are the practical uh, implications if we were to move to a longer parliamentary term? Mm -hmm. So we've made a few practical recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you can say, yes, four years is great, but then, but then what? What yes. do you do after that? Um, so one practical uh, implication is that we've also recommended that the four-year term be a fixed term. So with a fixed term, we would say that an election occurs every four years on, say, the first weekend of September. Right. Um, which would provide some certainty, but also mm -hmm. remove um, the, the sort of the longer the term is, um, the longer the, the more chance the mm -hmm. prime minister has to sort of just. Um, it's been likened to having the um, the starting pistol at the race right. and, and being a, being a competitor as well. So it's a bit of an unfair advantage. So um, fixing the term makes sense, yeah. and also setting the date makes sense for mm -hmm. allows for certainty. Mm -hmm. People know when it's coming up. Mm -hmm. How important is it for voters for the public? to engage in this discussion, the wider constitutional mm. review? I think it's really important. I've um, really applauded the Constitutional Advisor Advisory Panel, many three-letter acronyms to keep abreast of in this space. Um, they've been doing a really good job of engaging with New Zealand, um, having holding meetings, um, seeking submissions. Um, our paper was a submission to the um, Constitutional Panel. Um, it's really important that New Zealanders understand that the Constitution matters um, and I think it is relevant to everybody. We recommend it should go to referendum, go to a referendum. I think the politicians also acknowledge that this is a good idea. Um, we also recommend it shouldn't be implemented until sort of 2017 at the earliest, um, so that the current lot in at the moment aren't seen to be sort of feathering their nests for the next few years to come for the next term, for example. But basically the, the government will have um, to respond as they wish and they can seek to hold a referendum at some point down the track, and I think it would be wise to do that. Thank you, and thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome, Davina. Thank you.
Well, there certainly is a lot to consider even before we come to the stage of a potential referendum on the issue with or without a formal constitution. So if you'd like to keep informed about some of the issues raised by the constitution conversation, here are some websites which could be useful to you. cap.government.nz and maxim.org.nz. Thank you.